Hey, welcome. Eddie Hyatt here, and I have a question for you. Are you experiencing the joy of the Lord? Are you experiencing that internal sense of, of well-being and joy that flows from the Holy Spirit and from having and knowing that you're in right relationship with God? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about today. You know, the Bible tells us uh, that we can experience exceeding joy, as the old King James says, unspeakable joy. The New, new King James verse says inexpressible joy. A friend just recently emailed me and asked me if I would uh, address this issue of joy and talk about the difference between joy and happiness. Yes, there's a difference between joy and happiness, and the Bible has so much to say about joy. Let me read that passage in um, 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. And it's talking about, uh, he says, whom having not seen you love, having not seen Jesus, we haven't seen him with our physical eyes, but yet we've committed our lives to him, we love him. Though you do not now see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Wow. Yet you believe, and you notice that faith is connected here with joy. Yet believing, you don't see him, but yet believing, you rejoice. Now rejoice is a verb, shows action. So to rejoice is to express joy. And he says, having not seen you love, though you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Let me just read just one example of the early church and the joy that was expressed in the most difficult situations. And in Acts chapter 5, we read about uh, Peter and John, I believe it was, being arrested and, and brought before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish court, uh, the highest Jewish court there in Israel at the time. And uh, they were commanded not to teach or preach in the name of Jesus, and then they were beaten. One translation says they were flogged. Now, that was, that was no nice thing. Uh, it was a very painful situation. And it says, and then they let them go, flogged them, beat them, and then ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. How did they respond? Did they leave with their head down and depressed? Oh, God, why did you let this happen to us? Now, listen to this. Verse 41, Acts 5 says, So they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing, expressing joy. Rejoicing. Rejoice is a verb. So joy is a noun. Rejoice is a verb. And so we have to, sometimes we have to move from the noun to the verb and express the joy. I'll never forget my wife Susan telling about when we lived in St. John, New Brunswick for eight years in the first part of our ministry, actually Sue's hometown where she was born and, and, and raised there in that area. And St. John is on the Bay of Fundy, the Atlantic Ocean, and it is, a, especially in the summer, it is, there's lots of fog. The city can be like shrouded in fog for weeks at a time. And um, she, she, she tells about that one day she was driving along and the city had been shrouded in fog for days. We hadn't seen any sun and she was kind of feeling down and so on. And she was talking aloud to the Lord and saying, Lord, I thought we as Christians, we're supposed to, we, we're supposed to have all of this joy. We're supposed to have all of this, Lord. What, 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 what is going on here? And she heard the Holy Spirit say, it's in you. Let it come out. In other words, express it. Go ahead and rejoice express the joy that is yours that's on the inside of you you know galatians 5 22 says that joy is a fruit of the holy spirit in other words it's it comes from the spirit now this is where i would draw a line between joy and happiness happiness is dependent upon your circumstances 
and 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 so much of the world today, especially the, the ones who don't know Jesus, and, and too much of the church is seeking for happiness. Well, if I can just have this kind of house, if I could have this house, I would be happy. If I could have this car, I would be happy. If I could have this man, I would be happy. If I could have this woman, I would be happy. But my friends, so many times people find out that what they thought would make them happy actually made them miserable. And so happiness, pursuing happiness is an elusive thing. And what the world needs today is not happiness. What the world needs is joy. The joy that comes from knowing Jesus, the joy that comes, that rises up from the Holy Spirit and flows forth from the inside. For you see, you can have joy regardless of what you have or you don't have. Yes, we all, and, and it is God's will for us to have nice things, but what you must never do is, is put your faith in having nice things in thinking that that will be the source of your joy. It is God's will that he himself becomes the source of your joy, that he becomes the object of your affections and the source of your joy. Let me tell you about a passage that God gave me, and maybe I'll turn over and read it. When I was in the hospital just recently, had a whole series, and many of you know about this, of physical challenges over a three-month period. Two urinary tract infections, one that uh, that hospitalized me for uh, a week, a, uh, and all this is happening at the same time. A, a blocked urine flow because of an enlarged prostate, uh, the COVID virus all at the same time, uh, six different, uh, several visits to a urologist, six different catheters installed in me and, and wearing one continually over a two month period and eventually uh, 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 prostate surgery, by the way, I'm doing well now. Thank God I'm in better health uh, than I was before I went after, through all of this. But what I wanted to tell you about joy, when I was, uh, when, when I was uh, hospitalized for a week, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, do you, do you have a scripture for me? And I have found that many times God will give you a, by his spirit, he will give you an appropriate verse of scripture. And the scripture that God gave me was about joy. And it is in Isaiah chapter 55. And I want to turn over and read it to you. Uh, and and this, was, <laughs> this was such a blessing to me. And, um, and and I'm reading I'm reading it from the NIV. So this is what came to me, and I meditated on over and over and over again, and repeated it. It says, "You will go out in joy." In other words, I receive that as God speaking to me. You're going to go out of this place in joy. <laughs> you will go out in joy. And be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. In other words, there is going to be joy. And I can say through all of this ordeal, I was never sad, I was never depressed, I was never down. Now, I can't, I can't say that I was happy. I wanted out of there. But because of, of having this very real relationship with Almighty God, I knew he was with me. I knew he was in me. And, uh, and there was a settledness on the inside. And as I meditated upon scriptures like this, there were times I would feel the joy rising up in me, even though I had a... Uh, a catheter up my urethra tube and an IV in my arm and lying and couldn't turn to my right or the left. But yet there were times meditating on God's word, I would feel the joy rising up. And I was continually encouraging the nurses, the doctor, <laughs> and different ones. 
Hallelujah. No, I, I can't say that I was happy, but I, but I, because, you know, happiness is so superficial. You can be happy today because something good has happened, but then your circumstances change, and then you're down in the, the, the pit. You're down in the dumps tomorrow because your happiness is dependent upon happiness, dependent upon your circumstances. But when we learn to live in the joy of the Lord, there is something stable and consistent about that. And yes, I did come out, and I remember... Uh, uh, when they finally, after a week there, the, the urologist and the surgeon, uh, released me. No, that was, that was the second time I was in for the surgery. But I remember the nurse, you know, got a, a wheelchair, was going to push me down. I said, no, no. I said, I said, I'm not an invalid. I, I said, I'll walk down. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Thank God for his Holy Spirit in us. And for the joy of the Lord, because remember, we must never let Satan rob us of our joy. For there's a couple of Old Testament passages that are so important in this regard. I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget them. One of them is, is Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 that says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And then Proverbs uh, 17, verse 22 says that a merry heart does good like a medicine. A merry heart does good like a medicine. You know, these passages were written, uh, you know, thousands of years ago. At least uh, probably 26, 2700 years ago. And, and, uh, and modern science is just now learning what the Bible told us. And revealed many, many years ago that, that a merry heart does good like a mes medicine, that uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. This was made very real to me years ago when we lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and St. Francis Hospital. Tulsa is a very health-conscious city, and St. Francis Hospital, one of the most pre prestigious hospitals in Oklahoma, and especially in Tulsa, there was a big full-page article in the Tulsa World uh, about how that the hospital administration was was hosting a laughing seminar for all of the medical professionals, for the, the doctors and the nurses. And the purpose was to encourage them and to, to show them keys for helping their patients to laugh. And because the article went on to say that modern medical research, well, if they'd been reading their Bibles, they'd, all, they'd already know this. But it went on to say that modern medical research is showing how laughter, now this, this was not a, a Christian article, so that they're using the word laughter. But they said that modern medical research is showing how, the, how laughter can have such a positive effect upon our physical health. And, and uh, it went on to say that modern medical research has shown and is showing that laughter will have the same sort of effects that jogging and exercise can have, that it will stabilize your heart rate, lower your blood pressure, and, and, and have all of these wonderful physical healthful benefits by laughing. Wow. Some of you that are dragging, you need to let, you need to begin to rejoice. Let the joy of the Lord begin to flow. Paul exhorted, and he was writing from prison. He was under house arrest in Rome. In fact, he's been a prisoner now for well over two years. He was, he was incarcerated in Caesarea for two years by the Romans, and then he was taken to, to Rome for trial on the way to Rome, he got shipwrecked on an island, but he finally got there and he's under house arrest in Rome and he writes what we know as the prison epistles, which are, uh, they are Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, the prison epistles. I used to teach those when I was teaching in a, uh, a, 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 at, let's see, 
I was trying to remember if I've taught them at Oral Roberts University. I know I taught them at Zion Bible Institute, and I taught them at Christ for the Nations Institute here in Dallas. But uh, in his, the letter to the Philippians, but he's always saying this. And again, he's writing from prison, chained to a Roman soldier. And he says to them, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Paul's saying, let the joy come forth. Express the joy. Let it come forth. It's there in you. Let it come forth. Rejoice, Rejoice is a verb. Joy is the noun. Rejoice is the verb. Rejoice in the Lord always, Paul says. And then there, there's one there I even noticed where further down that chapter, he said that I rejoice greatly when he got a, a certain piece of news from them. I rejoice greatly. Paul is not allowing Satan to steal his joy. Oh, my friends, do not allow Satan to steal your joy. I'll tell you another little uh, story. Now, now, joy is a fruit of the Spirit, and it can just be very, very peaceful, very settled. But then there can come times where it will, by the Spirit, it will really manifest and flow like those rivers of living water. And one of those happened in the early days of our marriage when Sue and I uh, were planting a congregation in St. John, New Brunswick, her hometown. And, um, and, and for whatever reason, we just started going through a very difficult time with the ministry personally. It was like what was going out was much more than what was coming in. And finally, we got to the place where we were, we were renting a building for our meetings that we were behind on everything. Our heating bill, we, we uh, used oil for heating there in Canada. It got cold, especially in the winter. Uh, our electric bill, our phone bill, everything we were falling behind and, uh, and were in danger of having uh, our electricity, our oil cut off, our phone. Uh, and at the same time, our car broke down. I took it into the shop. It was going to cost several hundred dollars to repair it. I uh, didn't have the money to repair it, but what could we do? And so I had to leave it and go go, go rent a car from a rental service. Didn't have the money to pay for the rental car. Thankfully, I didn't have to, to pay for it until I returned it. But uh, So it was a really a horrible situation. And so right at the same time, we received an invitation from a large ministry here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that they were having a pastor's conference, and, and any pastors, they were inviting all the, the, the pastors, these pastors they sent letters to, to come, and uh, they were going to provide uh, your, your hotel room, and I think it was one or two meals a day. All, they, all, all we had to do was to pay for our travel to get there, to go there and back. So when Sue read that, she said, I feel we're supposed to go to this conference. And I say, look, I said, uh, it's going to take all the faith that I got. I don't see any way we can go. I, it's going to take all the faith I have to dig it out of this hole we're in. She said, well, I'm going to pack my suitcase. I believe God's going to provide. She said, if you're not ready to go, I may go alone. You may be left behind. I said, okay. I said, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and pack my suitcase then. Although I'll admit I didn't feel my faith was, was where, where hers was at at the time. But anyway, I decided then... If we were going to go to Texas, it was going to be, we had to leave the following Wednesday. And so I decided, okay, I'm going to church Sunday. I decided, okay, I need to, I, because I hadn't told people what was going on. I was preaching sermons of faith and miracles and so on, and, and people probably thought we were rolling in money based on my messages of faith I was preaching. So I decided, okay, I need to go ahead and tell people where we are. I need to just bring this out in the open and tell people where we are. And so after our song service and some preliminaries, uh, and, and I, I was going to take up the Sunday morning tithes and offerings, I began to tell people where we were. But before I did this, for whatever reason, maybe, maybe I was prompted by the Holy Spirit. This has been, you know, 40 plus years ago. I read two scriptures on laughing. And one of them was Psalm chapter 2, verse 4, where it talks about 
uh, the, the Gentiles, the heathen, the people who don't know God, gathering themselves against the Lord and against his anointed and, and making all these boasts and claims of what they were going to do. We're going to cast their cords from us. We're going to cast their bonds from us and so on. And it says that God's response is he doesn't get nervous. He doesn't bite his fingernails. Oh, what am I going to do? It says he who sits in the heavens laughs. It is a laugh of derision. It is a laugh of these poor little puny human beings. What are they going to try next? These poor little people making all these big boastful things, what they're going to do. He who sits in the heavens laughs. So I read that. Then I read Job 5.22 that speaks of the righteous man. It says, at destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. So I read those scriptures, then I started telling people about the situation we're in. You know, I said we're behind on all of our bills. Our electric bill is, is two months behind. If we don't catch up soon, they're going to cut off our electricity. And when I said that, it wasn't something from here. Something down in my innermost being, it was, it was from the Holy Spirit. A laughter rose up in me, and I laughed. And then I told them about our situation with our heating oil, that we were behind on it and in danger of being cut off. And again, every time I would tell them one of the problems we were facing, this laughter would rise up inside of me. I told them about our, our church, the church telephone, how it was behind, and the laughter rose up again. At first, people looked at me like, what is going on? But then before it was over, they were laughing with me. <laughs> we didn't know why we were laughing, but it was the joy of the Lord that was rising up. We were rejoicing. Well, then I told them about the, our car had broken down, was in the shop. We didn't have the money to pay for it. And then I knew in the natural this would really go over like a lead balloon. I said, now, on top of this, I said, Sue and I, are planning to go to Dallas, Texas on Wednesday for a conference. And uh, so I told them we'd already asked somebody to look after the Wednesday night service for us and announce who would be looking after it. But I'm saying, well, listen, we don't have any money to go to Dallas, Texas. And so the service is over. The Sunday morning ties and offering are counted. And it's the same again. We've, we've gone further behind. <laughs> But you know something? I knew that God was up to something because I knew that that laughter was not something that I had worked up. I knew, I had recognized, I knew it had come and risen up out of my innermost being. I knew God was up to something. Well, that night, Sunday night, and Sunday night, especially in the, in, in the summertime in, in Canada, when you only have a few weeks of good weather, warm weather, most churches don't even bother having a Sunday night service. We did, but there were only a few people there, maybe 10 or 12 people. And, and, uh, and people did their giving on Sunday morning. So, you know, normally we might get 25, 30, $40 on a Sunday night. If there was $50, I mean $100, we, we would feel like we had a landslide. So, I took up the offering that night. I did not say anything about the problems. I felt like I'd already dealt with that. But I did mention that we were going to be away, going away on Wednesday. Well, at the end of the service, there was a young man. He did not attend our, our church. Uh, I don't remember him ever being in any of our services except this one time. But my friends, God's got the right people at the right place at the right time. He had attended our Bible school. But we had not seen him in some time because he had had a motorcycle accident that, that had some quite serious injuries, I think, in his foot uh, and, and so on. And he had been, been hospitalized. But he was there that night. He has recovered and everything. So after the service, uh, he came up to Sue. Now, this is, this is about probably, this is probably about 1982, maybe 1983. He came up to Sue and he said, I would like for you to, to use my offering for this trip to Texas, Eddie mentioned, that you all are taking. And he said, and anything else you might need in the ministry. 
So we counted the offering that night, and this young man had put in a check for $5,000. Now, this, this is when gasoline is like 70, 80 cents per gallon. Uh, this is before years of inflation. <laughs> so that would be more probably like 10,000 today. So God came through. So we went out the next day. We paid up all of our bills. We, we got our car out of the shop, took the rental car back, and we bought two round-trip tickets to Dallas, Texas, and still had some spending money left over. My friends, don't we serve an amazing God? And so if you want to maintain this joy, here's what I would recommend based on my experience of serving God for over 50 years. Do a lot of thinking, meditating on God, on his character, not just on his promises. Yeah, that's, that's good too. But on his character, on who he is, on his goodness, on his mercy, on his grace, on his faithfulness, on his mighty creative power. What an awesome God. When I, when I, when I read reports of this modern JWST telescope that they've put out in space and, and, and how it's peering into space and the thousands of galaxies and, and, and quasars and black holes and so many things they don't understand. I am in awe of the wisdom and power of our God, of our Creator. So if you want to maintain the joy of the Lord, Spend much time meditating on his character, on his attributes, on who he is. Meditate on his faithfulness. Meditate on his promises such I will never leave you nor forsake you. So when I was hospital for a week and, and paying at least six visits to the ER and a urologist and having different catheters uh, in, inserted in me, I had no question because that's something I had meditated on for years where God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you always until the end of the age. So I think, I know that is one reason I was never down. I was never depressed, never discouraged because I, I just, it was so real inside of me. God is with me. I may not understand why all this is happening, what's going on, but I know God is with me through all of this. And I, I believe that, that, that what the devil is meant for bad, God would turn around for good, and I'm going to come out of this better and stronger than ever. So my friends, meditate on God's word. Get his word down in your heart. Get to know him. There's a passage in, I believe it's Psalm 9. It says, they, those who know your name will put their trust in you. To know God's name means to know his character. And that's why I'm, I'm emphasizing, if you want to have God's joy and maintain his joy, me meditate on his name. And, and when the Bible talks about knowing his name, it's talking about knowing his character, knowing his attributes. They that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for you have not forsaken those who trust in you. Uh, I'm going to turn over and read that. I may not be quoting it exactly verbatim, so I'm going to turn over to Psalm chapter 9 because that is such a, a very important passage. Psalm chapter 9. And he starts out the psalm, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. And um, have... Just bear with me for a moment here as I go down. Yeah, here it is. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. It doesn't say you won't have any trouble, but it says that he will be a refuge for you in times of trouble. And those who know your name will put their trust in you. Those who know your character, those who have a personal relationship with you and know your name, know your character, know your attributes, Know who you are, what you're like. Those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, 
have not forsaken those who seek you. Wow. I knew God had not forsaken me. I knew he was with me. And I had confidence he was, he was faithful and was going to bring me through. And he has. And he's going to do the same for you. So, Lord, I thank you for my brother and sister that's watching me today. Lord, I pray that your joy, it's the joy of the Lord. It's not a, it's not a human joy. It says the joy of the Lord is your strength. It says that joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Lord, let your joy rise up in my brother, my sister now and flow forth one of those rivers of living water that Jesus spoke of that would flow out of the spirit, out of our innermost being and let them be strengthened and refreshed today in your presence and in your joy. Thank you for it, Lord. I praise you in Jesus' name. Hey, I'm Eddie Hyatt. Check out my website, eddiehyatt.com. Check out my podcast, the, the Eddie Hyatt Podcast. You're welcome to follow me on Facebook. Uh, friend me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. I'm also on LinkedIn. And I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.